Welcome back everyone. Uh, so, in the last two lectures, uh, we have actually defined uh, basic notions of Lie algebras and saw some examples. So, in this lecture, uh, I will actually uh, go through some problems, okay, which are actually somewhat very basic and then these problems somewhat will give you good grip on uh, the basic notions of Lie algebras. So, let us uh, begin. So, the very first problem is actually very simple, it is again property of this uh, Lie bracket. <coughs> so, let us say G be a Lie algebra over complex numbers. So, then prove that the bracket x 0 and then 0 x that should be 0 for all x in G. Okay. So, I will do uh, one of them, I will do the first uh, bracket and then I will leave it the second bracket as exercise. So, the how to prove this? So, we just use the property of uh, this uh, 0 element of the vector space. If I add 0 plus 0, then we get 0. Okay. Because of this, now using this uh, linearity of this uh, brackets, if we compute x comma 0 plus 0. So, that will be equal to bracket x 0 plus bracket x 0. On the one hand, you get uh, x, x comma 0, sorry, x comma 0. On the other hand, you are getting 2 x comma 0. So, now we are working over uh, complex numbers. So, this immediately implies x comma 0 must be 0 for all x in G. Okay. So, now uh, let us see our second problem. Again, this is something to do with the Lie product. So, suppose we have two elements, let us say x comma y in G such that the bracket is non zero. So, then we want to know as vectors x and y whether they are linearly dependent or not because the bracket is non-zero. So, one immediately gets actually x and y are linearly independent over complex numbers. So, how do we prove this? We can prove by contradiction. Okay, the proof suppose if they are actually not linearly independent, then they must be linearly dependent. So, suppose not x and y must be linearly dependent. So, that will imply x will be some multiple of y for some lambda complex numbers. So, that means, if I compute the Lie bracket x y, uh, then it will imply that I can replace x by lambda y and then we get lambda times y y. So, the bracket x y is actually equal to lambda times y y, but we know that the bracket of x x is 0 using the skew symmetric. So, that will imply this is 0. So, that will that says the bracket x y must be 0 if x and y are linearly dependent. So, that means if, if you assume to begin with bracket x y is non 0, then we must get x and y are linearly independent. So, this is actually a contradiction. Yeah. Okay, so, let us uh, uh, see the third problem. Uh, this is about computing uh, some structure constants for known uh, Lie algebras. So, let us uh, begin with GL and C. Okay. As I said, the structure constants always uh, depending upon the choice of the basis. So, we have a natural basis for GL and C. So, we will actually compute the structure constants of uh, G L and C with respect to uh, that natural ba basis E i j. So, this is actually uh, the general linear Lie algebra over C and we know that this E i j where i ranging i j ranging from 1 to n this form a basis for G L and C. Okay. So, now what is the question? 
question is compute the structure constants for the Lie algebra G L and C with respect to this basis P. Okay, so it is actually a very simple computation. So I'll just I will do. So recall uh, this E i j is nothing but it is the n by n matrix. So that has actually uh, entry one in the i j th entry. Okay, so this has which has entry one in the ijth position or the entry and all other entries are 0, so 0 elsewhere. So that is the actually the matrix Eij, the it is called elementary matrix. So now it is easy to do computation between the elementary matrix, so uh, matrix multiplication. So if I take Eij and then multiply with Ekl then what we get is if j equal to k we get e i l otherwise we get 0. So, that means if I call this uh, Kronecker delta j k as delta j k uh, uh, then uh, this e i j e k l is nothing but Kronecker delta j k into e i l. So, this is simple matrix multiplication either you can the one best way to prove uh, this as okay you think this e i j as uh, operator acting on c n and then just uh, uh, this multiplication corresponds to matrix uh, sorry matrix multiplication corresponds to the composition of linear maps using that you can easily prove this. So, this I will leave it as exercise this is very elementary linear algebra exercise. Now, once you know how to multiply two elementary matrices then it is not hard to compute uh, what will be the structure constants. So, that is given by the following formula. So, if I take E i j and then compute uh, what is this bracket. So, then it will be E i j E k l minus E k l E i j. So, then if you rewrite this using the previous formula this is delta j k E i l minus delta i l e k j ok. So, this is the structure constant that you get. So, this is this delta j k is the Kronecker delta ok I, I hope all of you know. So, now <coughs> this is easy. So, now we will actually again compute uh, the structure constants for this uh, another algebra which is again very important algebra which will appear later in our uh, discussion. So, which is this uh, special linear algebra S L and C ok. So, these are all the traceless matrices inside G L and C. So, we take this S L and C. So, this is uh, the special linear Lie algebra over C. So, what is this by definition this is uh, those A in G L and C such that the trace of A is 0 ok. So, it is not hard to actually see that uh, this S L and C is actually a Lie subalgebra of uh, G L and C. So, that is some elementary calculation I will leave it to you. So, now uh, using the standard basis of G L and C we can come up with uh, a standard basis of S L and C. So, what is it? Uh, S L and C is all traceless matrices. So, for example, I can take all this E i j for all i not equal to j, they are all uh, they are all actually uh, traceless matrices, then they but they do not include diagonal matrices. So, to include diagonal matrices, you just take uh, uh, the basis for the diagonal matrices. So, because the traceless condition says the sum of the diagonal entries must be 0. So, what we can do we can just put 1 minus 1 in i and i plus 1 to place and then construct a basis. So, that is given by E i i 
minus e i plus 1 i plus 1 in terms of the elementary matrices okay this is uh, i ranging from 1 to up to n minus 1 so it cannot be n okay so if you just uh, see that it is not hard to prove actually this is actually linearly independent okay that i will just leave it as exercise and if you count the number of elements in this set uh, here all these are all like off diagonal entries so it will be like if you count only strictly upper triangular uh, uh, upper triangular matrices so that will be n into n minus 1 by 2 because uh, uh, the matrix of the form like this so this is let us say the diagonal so then if you take the first off diagonal position so then you will have n minus 1 choices then the second off diagonal you will have n minus 2 choice you can go up to 1. So if you add all of them 1 plus etc plus n minus 1 then you get n into n minus 1 by 2. So these many choices are there uh, for the strictly upper triangular matrices that are of the form E A J. Okay. So now for the lower triangular matrices you will have the again same similar choices so you will get twice of this so that will be the cardinality of this the number of E A J will be twice n into n minus 1 by 2 and here it is easy to see that there are only n minus 1 uh, number of matrices. So if you count them together this if you call this is B so then this B the cardinality of B is easy to see it is n into n minus 1 by 2 times 2 uh, plus n minus 1 so it is actually n into n minus 1 plus n minus 1 which is n plus 1 times n minus 1 which is exactly n square minus 1. So but it is not hard to prove because this trace condition is one linear condition so that simply says the dimension of this SLN C is nothing but 1 less than the dimension of GLN so that is exactly n square minus 1. So now putting together so this B must be a basis so this implies this B must be a basis for this SLN okay. So this is actually a standard basis uh, coming from the standard basis of GLN C okay this is what we always refer, refer as standard basis. So now if you take uh, this basis and then if you want to compute again the structure constants so then you can see that the same uh, formula will work for E i j E k L. So then uh, now we can actually uh, only need to compute it for uh, this uh, how this diagonal uh, matrices actually help uh, okay how my diagonal matrices will uh, act on this other matrices okay so let me write it so the first formula is for the eijs so that is easy to write if i compute this as before it is delta jk uh, il minus delta il ekj so this formula holds as it is so this we are computing it for i not equal to j and k not equal to l these in indices varying from 1 to n okay so now we want to compute it for uh, e i i minus e i i i plus 1 i plus 1 e k l. So instead of computing that uh, what we will do we will actually just write down it for uh, any general uh, diagonal matrix so then it is easy to derive that uh, sub case okay. So why I want to do that because then the formula looks very pretty which this computation will be again used later when we actually. Uh, come back to this uh, SLNC okay so that is what I want to do so again recall uh, this uh, same formula 1 can be used to compute E I I E K L okay but again like uh, if you just uh, uh, book keep because both these indices are same I I I and J are same okay that because of that this formula can be reinterpreted as follows this is exactly equal to delta i k now instead of e i l i can write e k l there is no harm okay because if this k if it is equal to i then i can put k here if it is not equal to i then it going to be zero so so this this is same as delta i k e i l okay so there is no issue 
So, now this uh, uh, the second term will be similar to that delta I L E K L. Okay. So, this is just a small modification of the formula 1 for this uh, special case. Now, using this it is easy to compute what will happen to any diagonal matrix. Let us say D is a diagonal matrix. So, diagonal matrix we write it this way diagonal A 1 etcetera A n or in terms of the basis if you write this is exactly A 1 E 1 1 plus etcetera plus A n E a n. So, when I say basis the basis for the set of all diagonal matrices. So, it is written this way. Okay. So, now uh, if you compute D with E k L then it is easy computation then what we get? We get exactly summation A i E i i E k L okay, for uh, I, I ranging from 1 to n. So, now again using this earlier formula you can see that because this i varies from 1 to n. So, when this i hits k then it will survive. So, it will give me a k e k k e k l e k k e k l will be just this term e k l. Okay. So, this is going to be e k l and then if you just uh, if i hits l. So, note that this k is not equal to l. Okay. We are computing the structure constant for the elements of this uh, SLN C. So, uh, E k L uh, to begin with uh, k should be not equal to L. So, then because k not equal to L this I can take value both k and L. So, when I takes value L then this is exactly A L E k L. Okay. So, so this says the bracket D E k L is nothing but A k minus A L times E k L. Okay. So, this is the formula that we get for all D. Okay. So, this is actually very important uh, formula. So, we will actually reinterpret this term that appear here okay, in terms of what is called projections. Okay. So, for any uh, this diagonal matrix uh, we, we, we can easily define what is called uh, ith coordinate projection because this is written as a 1 e 1 1 plus etcetera a n e n n. So, ith coordinate we can take it to be the coefficient of e i i. So, in that sense this a k will be the kth coordinate projection l will be a l will be lth coordinate projection. So, basically it is different between those two projections. Okay. This is one way to think about uh, this uh, uh, this equality we will come back to this later okay this is actually very important observation later that will be used uh, in the theory of semi simple e algebras okay so now i guess uh, we got somewhat more comfortable with uh, some of this computing structure constants again later uh, when I do this uh, classification of smaller dimension uh, Lie algebras, again we will actually compute uh, structure constants with respect to some special basis when we take dimension 2 or dimension 3 and so on. Okay. So, now uh, I want to move on. So, so these are all about uh, basic Lie algebras and structure constant. I also introduced uh, some of these notions. Uh, other notions uh, called homomorphisms, derivations and so on. So, I want to actually do some problems related to that. Okay. So, here is the fifth problem. So, we, I we define what is called this adjoint map. So, let us recall which is a very, very important map. Okay. So, adjoint map. So, what is this adjoint map? Uh, you have this Lie algebra G and then uh, this map is defined from G to G L of G. Okay. So, recall G L of G by definition as a vector space okay, as a set it is endomorphism of G. So, this is the set of all C linear maps from G to G. Okay. So, what is the dimension of this G L of G? The dimension of G L of G is nothing but the dimension of the dimension of g square. Okay. So, I stopped using this uh, c 
but it is understood okay we are working overseas always so now <coughs> this is the map that we are defining this adjoint map what it does it takes an element x to what is called add x so what is this add x where this add x is a map again from g to g so this is a c linear map okay so that is easy to check given by add x of y is nothing but bracket x y for all y in g okay so this is this uh, particular map that we are talking about which is just a linear map we also checked this is actually a derivation okay so that is something we already checked so we checked add x is a derivation for each x and j so in particularly this add adjoint map is indeed mapping to set of all derivations of g okay so which we denoted by d or g okay this is the set of all derivations of g so this is sitting inside glg okay so now the question is uh, uh, this add map okay this we have defined from g to glg so we also have a lie algebra structure on glg given by the commutator bracket okay we have a composition of maps that makes uh, gl of g as uh, or the endomorphism of g as associative algebra so once you know that this is an associative algebra then com uh, commutator bracket will actually give you the lie algebra structure on this okay that is what we denoted by glg so now uh, what is the question question is prove that this add map is actually lie algebra homomorphism okay so for that we need to check the following so linear linearity is very clear okay so i will leave it to you to check it's easy to see add is c linear map okay that i am not going to check so the only thing that we need to check so the climb is this is actually uh, obeys the lie structure that means add of bracket xy should be equal to bracket of this add x add y but what is bracket of add x add y that is nothing but add x composition add y minus add y composition add x so this is uh, the definition of commutator inside this uh, glg okay add x y is this this is what we need to prove so this we need to prove as maps but if we just rewrite everything we will see that this is nothing but uh, just a jacobi identity okay so let's do it so let's rewrite one by one okay so what is the what is on the left hand side so the left hand side you have add bracket xy defined on each other, okay so then what it is it is nothing but bracket xy z okay because this is one element and then you are taking the bracket with z so now <coughs> what is on the right hand side right hand side the first equation let's say so this is let's say 1 this is let's say 2 so then right hand side 1 is nothing but add x composition add y applied on z so if you just reveal it this is first you are applying the add y map so you get y z and then you have to compose it with add x so then you apply x okay 
similarly right hand side 2. So, that is nothing but add y composition add x on z. So, that nothing but first apply x z then apply y. Okay. So, then what do we need to do? We need to prove that if we call this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, then if you go back we have to prove 1 is equal to 2 minus 3. Okay. So, we need to prove 1 is equal to 2 minus 3, but let us look at it. Okay. So, let us take the first one. The first one is nothing but bracket x y z. Okay. So, now let us use Jacobi identity. To use Jacobi identity, it is better to rewrite this way bracket z bracket x y. This is first we have used what is called skew symmetric. So, now if you rewrite this, this is exactly minus e z x y minus x e z y because this is already derivation. So, this is Jacobi identity or we are using that add e z is derivation. Okay. So, then this is uh, now if you rewrite what do you get? Uh, you get for example, from here bracket x y z. So, I am switching this. So, then this will become plus bracket y e z x. So, then if you rewrite again x y z minus yeah. minus y x z. Okay. So, that is what we wanted to prove. Na? So, this minus this should be this. This is the first term x y z and then y x z. So, we proved bracket x y z is this. Okay. So, it is basically rewriting the Jacobi identity in a different way and that proves that add x y is nothing but add x composition add y minus add y composition add x. Okay. So, this says this map adjoint map is actually a Lie algebra homomorphism from G to G L G. So, it is a very very important uh, uh, fact okay. it will be repeatedly used. I would say that you better check yourself at least once. Okay. So, now uh, let us get back to what is called this uh, derivations. Okay. So, I want to just clarify uh, one thing. Okay. So, we actually defined the many objects okay, in the last two lectures. So, just to, for some clarification, I want to actually recall what are all the things we did. So, first we defined okay, there is this bigger class called algebra over C. So, here we are not assuming anything about uh, the product. For example, the product may not be commutative, may not be associative, nothing. Okay. Only thing is there should be some compatible condition between uh, the product that comes from the ring structure and uh, the scalar multiplication. So, this is basically a vector space on top of it, it has a product okay, and that product under the scalar multiplication that comes from the vector space should have some compatibility condition. Okay, that is all. So, now this actually includes what is called this associative algebra. What is associative algebra? The product should satisfy the associative law. So, if you call the product is x y, then x y e z should be equal to x y times e z. So, this should be true. Okay. This is the associativity law. And here we saw another algebra called Lie algebra. Lie algebra again it is uh, highly non-commutative, non-associative algebra. Okay. I urge you to check uh, the Jacobi identity is not equivalent to associative law. Okay. So, 
it is actually one can come up with some characterization when uh, that uh, Lie product will become associative I will add it in the problem sheet ok. So, this is different structure. So, this is non commutative non associative algebra structure ok. So, this is what we have seen. Again here you can go further down we can actually talk about what is commutative associative algebra ok. That is also somewhat very very interesting class that one can study in uh, algebra. But here if you go down and then add commutativity then it becomes trivial ok. So, there is there is nothing like commutative Lie algebra. So, commutative uh, Lie algebras are nothing but vector spaces ok. So, they are not that interesting not interesting. Okay, this is what we have so done so far. So, when we talk about derivation we actually define derivations on algebras ok. So, that is actually somewhat better way to do because all this calculation works there in the algebra setting ok. So, here is the problem that is related to derivation you start with an algebra over C that means we have a product that is all we have a product from A cross A to A the product often denoted by just x y. Then the compatibility condition should be there between the scalar multiplication and the uh, multiplication. So, it should satisfy this property for all alpha in C, x y in C, no, sorry x y in A. So, now because of this uh, 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 I, I will be able to define derivation on uh, A ok. So, because what is derivation? Derivation on A is a C linear map that satisfies Leibniz rule. So, what is that? If you take the product uh, delta A B then you get A delta B plus delta A B ok. This is the usual uh, rule that you see in calculus ok, but here we are writing it for uh, any algebra capital A. So, a derivation delta is a Cilian map satisfying this ok. So, this is all I defined already I am just trying to recall. So, now uh, we also uh, define what is called this derivation A. These derivations of A are nothing but the set of all derivations ok, set of all derivations of A which uh, sits inside endomorphism of A ok. But we will see in a minute we already know that endomorphism of A has this product that is given by uh, composition. So, this G L of A is nothing but the al, uh, Lie algebra structure on this endomorphism of A. So, now this derivation A is actually subspace of G L of A. So, then the natural question is that whether this derivation A is uh, Lie algebra or not, Lie subalgebra or not. So, that is the case. So, one can prove that derivation A is a uh, Lie subalgebra of G L A ok. So, this is the plainly uh, computation. So, let me do it for you. So, here uh, uh, I will not check that derivation A is a, a vector space vector subspace of G L of A. I will only check whenever you take two elements uh, D comma E inside this derivation of A. So, then if you take this uh, bracket which is defined in GLA which is the commutator bracket D composition E minus E composition D that should be again a derivation ok that is the thing we need to prove. So, let us try to verify it. So, it is a basically a computation. So, let us uh, again do it like uh, what is on the left hand side and then right hand side and then we will just match. So, if you just compute what is on the 
left hand side. So, this is uh, we need to prove that uh, this is actually a derivation okay to prove that uh, derivation what we need to do we compute this d e acting on a b. So, then we need to prove this is actually giving me d e of a times b minus d e sorry a times bracket d e of b. Okay. So, this is the thing uh, you need to actually check. So, let us do this calculation. So, if you compute what is on the uh, left side, okay. so the left side computation that we are doing. So, then what is d e of a b? So, that is decomposition e of a b minus e composition d of a b. Okay. So, then let us compute this. So, then you get d e a b plus a e b minus e d a b plus a d b. So, then if you just uh, bring it in, so this term like 1 and then this term is like a 2. So, then you get d e a b okay plus e a d b again plus d a e b plus a d e b okay similarly minus e d a b plus d a e b and then minus E A D B minus A E A D B. So, now you can see that there are natural cancellations. So, this get cancelled with this and then this get cancelled with this. Okay. So, so then if you just uh, cancel them and then uh, group it, then what do you get? So, you get D e of a b plus a d e b minus e d a b minus a e d b. Okay, this is one side left hand side. So, now let us compute what we required on the right side okay, and then see what happens. Okay. So, the right hand side. So, we need to compute the first term. Let us call this is first term. This is the second term and then, then we will add the first term bracket d e acting on a on and then product with b. So, this is nothing but so d e minus e d acting on a and then b which is d of e a and then b minus e of d a times b. Okay. Similarly, a times d e bracket d e acting on b. Okay, then you get a times yeah, d, d of yeah, e of b. Okay, let us not jump, let us just do it step by step. 
so d e minus e b acting on b ok. So, then what do you get a d e acting on b is equal to a times d of e of b minus a times e of d of b ok. So, this is uh, 1 this is uh, 2. So, now what is 1 minus 2? That is what we need to compute na 1 minus 2. So, 1 minus 2 is equal to sorry not this is 1 this is So, this is 1. So, you get d of e of b plus ok a e of d of b and then minus e of d of a b and then minus a d of e of b ok. So, you can see whether it matches with this. So, this is the L h side. So, this is the R h s side ok. Let us see matching or happening or not. So, this is let us say the first term and this is matching with this ok d e of e b and then the second term a e of d of b ok some sign is missing So, that term is here ok. And then yeah this term is fine e of d of a b and then this is minus ok this sign I guess some problem. Ah ok. So, it is 1 minus 2. So, yeah maybe I missed some sign here. We need to do oh sorry this is actually the derivation. So, the derivation should have plus here ok. D e of a b should uh, ok this is not the definition ok sorry uh, this is correct where this the definition the definition of uh, so this is the definition of bracket d e that is fine what we need to check yeah so this is the term 1 and this is the term 2 this is the term 1 this is the term 2. So, basically we need to add that ok. So, we should not subtract. So, this is adding. So, if you add it then the terms are matching. So, then this must be plus and uh, this must be minus ok. So, in the right hand side uh, yeah. So, this term with comes with minus a of uh, e of d of b. So, that is comes with minus here and then here again it is plus. So, it is all matching. So, this is the third term, the third term is here ok. So, that proves L h s equal to R h s ok. 
So, that means uh, this bracket D is again a derivation for all D comma E n derivations of Okay, So, this uh, completes the proof. I will just uh, leave one exercise and then stop. Okay. So, this is again called uh, uh, Lebedev's rule or generalized stabilis rule because which is can be obtained from whatever the rule that I already told. So, here is the exercise. So, again start with an algebra over C. So, then take delta to be a derivation. So, that is a linear map satisfying the rule delta of A B equal to A delta of B plus delta of A B delta of A B. Okay. So, now uh, what we I want you to prove that this uh, if you compose n number of time and act it on x y then it has this formula very nice formula. So, this must have formula you must have seen in calculus the similar formula works here also and choose r delta r of x delta of n minus r of y and this is true for all x y n. Okay. So, I this is just uh, done by induction I will leave this as exercise okay, as I do not want to do another computation. Uh, we will stop here. Okay, I will continue with uh, other uh, uh, important basic notions like sub, uh, subalgebras, ideals, homomorphisms, and then uh, like uh, this isomorphism theorems and so on in the next class. I'll stop here. Thanks.